Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmaso at thewatchbox.com. It's in the description below. It is your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on any Watchbox platform. Please reach out to me directly for pricing. My email is tmaso at thewatchbox.com. Today, we're discussing a 43mm Grade 5 Titanium limited edition of 30 pieces based on the Grunefeld 1 Hertz originally launched in 2011. This is the 1 Hertz Titanium LE. So the watch is 43mm in diameter, 13.4mm thick, and from lug tip to lug tip, 51.7mm with a 22mm spacing between the lugs. We'll zoom out a little bit. Throw it on my wrist, which is 16 centimeters in circumference. And you can see it is large. It's not oversized. It would fit, but I wouldn't wear it on a wrist smaller than mine. You want a wrist of at least 16 centimeters circumference to wear this well. I'll move my sleeve out of the way so you can see clearly how much room I've got on each side of the lugs. Very little. The lugs are near the edge of my wrist, not over, which is why I think you need a wrist my size or larger to wear it well. But it is surprisingly thin. At under 13 and a half millimeters with a sloped bezel, it should slide underneath most cuffs. Now, the watch has a strap of buffalo, which is not something commonly seen. It's bolstered to give it some volume. You can see it has a couple of different color gradients across the top. It's a sort of navy blue with a lovely contrasting gold or maybe autumn golden stitch and then on the underside we have leather in signal orange to remind you that this is a dutch made watch turning a quick look at the buckle itself you can see it's a combination of polish and satin for contrast and that the shape of the lug is echoed in the shape of the buckle for handsome design parallelism the lugs are dramatically stepped out from the case band and this is grade 5 titanium the stuff that's lighter than steel harder than steel and hypoallergenic. We have a combination of polish and satin here. The mid-case is satinated to set it apart from the case back and the bezel. And we have a Grunefeld branded crown. We have a slightly cambered and boxed sapphire and then a dial with a lovely satin granular silver finish and several different displays. We have an indicator for the multifunction crown at three o'clock and so right now it's in winding mode. This allows me to wind the watch. You can see the power reserve indicator starts progressing towards fully wound. It has a manual wind 72 hour power reserve. Now when I push the crown, you do not pull this crown, you push this crown, it switches to setting mode. And in setting mode now, I've activated stop seconds or hacking. Now I can set the time and I can set to a reference time if I wish. Remember, once you're done setting, you need to push the crown again and revert to winding mode for the watch to actually run. You could see that the deadbeat seconds display dominates the dial and it sits proud of the dial actually supported by four columns. You could see that its top is satinated and then the inner edges as well as outer edges of this track are mirror beveled. We have satination on the hour and minute track and then satination with beveling on the hour minute track, the power reserve scale and the crown function display indicator. It is a deadbeat seconds watch and you could see that it aligns perfectly with the hashes on that seconds track. Turn it all over, you can see 30 piece limited edition titanium, which you can't see, at least at first glance, is that all these bridges are made of stainless steel, which is an extraordinarily difficult material to finish. Now there are also two barrels, so while it has a 72 hour power reserve, it has two separate power sources and two separate drivetrains. One barrel is dedicated exclusively to driving the seconds display, so that the power intensive complication and the fluctuation of energy caused by the release of the deadbeat doesn't affect the timing of the remainder of the watch. The second barrel operates these two hands right here. So we have two drivetrains to operate the two different displays and maintain the chronometric precision of the watch. Now, 39 joules it features a beat rate of 21,600 vibrations per hour. You can see that it does feature a free sprung balance for precise adjustment and durability against shock. It has an overcoil hair spring so in most any physical position, it's going to keep excellent time as an overcoil keeps better time in different positions relative to gravity than a flat hairspring. You can see that the bridges are all triple finished. So we have uh, evacuations that are satinated internally. Then the edges, the channels have satination around the corners. And then the outermost edges, as you can see, are mirror beveled. So three finishes on the stainless steel bridges. You can see that we have solarization on the barrels. We have circular satination on these ratchet wheels. 
All screw heads are black polished with chamfered slots and circumference. There's engine turning on the base plate, set nation on all of the wheels. And then we have a black polished uh, regulator cap and stud holder. All this is quite impressive. And if you look at the shape of the bridges, you could see that the bridges feature the profile of Dutch bell gable roofs or the roofs of traditional Dutch houses. You can also see a number of sharp exterior angles formed where two rounded bevels meet. Those are very difficult to pull off cleanly. So this is an ambitiously finished watch and success in that ambition. It's 30 meters water resistant, so don't take it swimming. But in every other regard, this is an everyday independent high horology complication you can wear and enjoy. Reach out to Team Also at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details.